Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Podcast Strikes Back. My name is George and you're listening to our weekly show, Top 8, where we round up all the big news in the world of movies. we got a massive episode lined up for you guys. This is going to be fun and I'm joined with the boys, Connor. Hello. And Benny. Hello. Guys, I know we say it every week. Big week, massive week, yada, yada, yada. But actually... There's some really big stories this week. And Benny, you even said that's one of the biggest stories in the past two to three years to drop about Zack Snyder. Yeah, that's that's um that headline is I thought I was I don't want to say dreaming in the sense that I wanted <laughs> it to happen, but it's what a huge what a huge story. Very sad story. But let's get into our segment before we start the news. Uh, what have we been watching? How's your week been? Break it down for me. <laughs> I've, I've had an all right week, George. It's been okay. Talk it out. Thanks um, for asking. I've just been, been watching the same stuff I've been watching before. Uh, American Gods, Fargo, and uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, loving all three. S.H.I.E.L.D. just wrapped up. Nice ending. Very cool tease for the next season where that show's going to go. Um, American Gods. Have you guys checked that out yet? No, no. I need to. It is very, very cool. Um, and the newest episode just really solidified that. Um, so that's about it for me. Also, I did have a friend see um, Baby Driver, Edgar Wright's new film, uh, and said best thing he's seen in a couple of years. Hell yeah, yeah. Awesome. Good so news. That that is yeah. across the board. Everyone's saying that pretty much. So that's I'm very excited news. for that one. Yeah, because that could have gone either way. His last no. couple haven't been. No way, man. Anyway, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean his last couple? <laughs> the World's End. That's one what? movie. Yeah, it's one movie. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and that's with two for me. It's and literally it's one movie. Over. A lot. And, as I, right. and as I said last time, I take the excess love from the previous yeah, two yeah. and just like spread it of across course. all three. <laughs> and thus, greatest trilogy ever. Yeah, I got to watch that movie again. Anyway, kind of what you've been watching. Um, I chucked on um, Netflix's new movie, uh, War Machine, with Brad Pitt. Now, this uh, is not about the Don Cheadle character from the Marvel films, correct? No. All right, it's moving bit of, on. Probably bit not going to watch it clever, then. Yeah. Bit of clever marketing on their part, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, no, this is a, a satirical take on the war in Afghanistan. Um, I was actually, kind of shows how much I know about the the events of, of that war that I assumed that this was a real character when I started, like, or that this was based on a real person. It is based on a real person, but um, it has been highly satiricalized. Is that a word? Sure, it is now. It is now. It's out, it's out there. Um, Connor's look, vernacular. Yeah. Hashtag <laughs> satiricalized. As long as you know what I'm talking about, we're sweet. Now, I've heard this movie is uh, very smug and not great. Um, it's, well, it's satire. So, of course, oh, it's, it's smug. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? Like, no, it's, it's, smug. Smug. <laughs> it's satire. Of course, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, look, it's, it's, it's unique. And I kind of get what Brad Pitt was talking about when he said that this wouldn't have been made if not for the medium of Netflix. It's not your typical film. Um, for people that have seen The Big Short, uh, it's very much in that style. Mm. Um, mm. You know, lots of narration. Infotainment. Yeah, it, <laughs> it more or less is this, is, this is far more satirical than, than The Big Short. The Big Short was very much about kind of understanding that phenomenon. But um, that. that phenomenon, phenomenon of that. Of that. <laughs> so descriptive. <laughs> the 2008 financial crisis, all right? There we go. Jesus. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was it was a cool little piece. It's not going to win any Oscars. Anytime. Is it up there with King Arthur? Oh no, man! I'm, King <laughs> Arthur is great. <laughs> Go check out our review for that, mm. Georgie. Um, I'm launching back into Full Metal Alchemist. Ooh. I got so this is an anime, awesome anime. I'm watching Brotherhood, which is the redo. So this is about sixty episodes. I've got. About 30 of the way in, and for whatever ever reason, you know, you just drift off from a TV series. So I'm getting back on the Full Metal Alchemist train, and I'm going to finish this. Working on your otaku bona fides. That's it. You, you're a mad weeaboo, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. You know me, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> you literally just switched into an entirely different language. That was bizarre. There was a moment there where I just wasn't sure whether you were having a stroke or not. <laughs> God, 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 like, yeah. That's very un-Australian. Connor, Connor only speaks American. Uh, amazing series, though. Uh, one of the best anime is not really much else to say. I'm yeah. looking forward to finishing it. I, I couldn't make I couldn't make it more than two or three episodes into it. I don't know why. I think you might have hyped it up too much for me when you when you first tried to get me onto it. Um, and I, I don't mind an, anime. It's nothing to do with that. It's just I don't know what it was. The world building, man. As yeah. you know, <laughs> we, love, we love saying world building, but seriously, yeah, the mythos in this is so dense and really satisfying. From uh. Just in all the mechanics and everything fitting in together and locking together, it feels very well realized, um, which is 
really, really, really nice. So yeah, go check it out. I'm looking forward to finishing it. Um, and I've already awesome. said that. So let's yeah. move on to the, <laughs> the news. news. All right. Top eight. Um, as Ben and, and you mentioned, uh, there's a massive drop for our first news story. Um, and that is that Zack Snyder has departed the Justice League. Um, unfortunately, it's because he has gone to go deal with some family tragedy. So his 20-year-old daughter committed suicide in March. Um, and, as, and as a result, he's uh, left the project. Two, two, um, what, two, three months later, that's, uh, so he's been working on this movie with this, this burden uh, all this time. And he mentioned that in his statement. You know, he said uh, this happened and he thought, I'm going to just hit the ground running and get dealt, like throw myself into my work, into yeah. my passions and, and just try and deal with it in that way. And obviously he needs time. Mm. Mm. This is a really difficult story. Because on the one hand, it's a really awful thing to have happen to someone. On the other hand, it's, you know, we have all expressed the want for him to be basically booted off this film for oh. ages. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, would either of you deny that? <laughs> like, it's, just, uh. it, we, we, none of us have really expressed any want for him to continue on with this series. Um, and the fact that now Joss Whedon has been brought in to complete post-production and even do some reshoots. Yes, by the way, that is also part of the story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I just kind of casually chucked that in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's massive. It is massive news. And, you know, that's, it's something that I'm excited for in, in terms of this film. Now, I, I don't think this is really, like once you get past the, the headline, um, Zack Snyder drops off Justice League and Avengers Joss Whedon takes over, which is, crazy Insane. like it is the most like april fool's headline mm, ever yeah. written um but uh, once you get past that and look at the details i don't think this movie is going to end up drastically different from what it was going to be anyway um joss whedon was already brought on board to write these reshoots um now he's just going to be directing it and finishing post-production i think he's very much going to be trying to complete Zack snyder's version of this film as well given the circumstances um and this movie is already so far down the road you know we've already had several trailers for this. Mm. Um, I, I really oh, think it's, it's going to... It's in November. It's November release date. So yeah, they're yeah, on the yeah. final... You know, they're finishing CG. They're, they're getting those final little mm. post-production components together. I mean, realistically, you are right. I mean, there's not much that he can do at this point to really change uh, But I don't think he wants to. I don't think he would, he, would, he would be even trying to. I think this is going to be very much uh, Zack Snyder's film. I wouldn't even be surprised if Joss Whedon's name isn't really on this too much. Probably wouldn't be. Um, it's, it's still going to say directed by Zack Snyder at the end, and have a little dedication, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what was what was really nice about the story was uh, I, Zack Snyder gets a lot of shit, and we've definitely thrown our two cents in there. And we'll get we back to it after a while. Yeah, though. yeah. But um, the the whole film community seemed to, you know, just the posts that I saw online, and everyone just seemed to be really playing nice, which was yeah very strange to see in this in this. But in this Marvel DC flame war that is yeah. never ending, it was so weird to see everyone kind of tiptoeing around what is this huge amazing story, like this ultimate like uh, just fanboy bait <laughs> news. Yeah, and everyone was just like. Oh. Uh, this is very respectful. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. To Which say. is why I've said it's such a it's it's a difficult story to talk about. Yeah, I actually went looking through some comments sections, which I tried oh. to do minimally, yeah. just because I'm like, uh, where's where's the dickhead who's gonna just run with this? I really saw very little. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, I was really impressed and good on you, film. Well community. done, internet. Yeah, yeah. well done. <laughs> For once, Finally. you weren't dickheads. Yeah. I didn't check YouTube. That would be insane. <laughs> 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 yeah, but. Uh, I don't think, as you said, Benny, I don't think this is going to change Justice League too much, but um, maybe Whedon will just smooth out a few things that's, and, and crystallize a few things that Zack Snyder doesn't quite, you know, he, he doesn't quite land those human story elements a lot of the time, I feel. Mm. I think Joss Whedon is intrinsically really good at writing characters. So maybe that offset will help 10%, 15%, just nudging it in the right direction. As you said, it's not going to change a lot, but it could be... It could be enough. Um, it could be. Do, well, here's, here's a good question then. Do you think that, um, thinking about Batman versus Superman, are there, if, if some of those edges had been smoothed over, do you think that you would have enjoyed that film? Uh, it's hard to say. It is, there's too many variables. Like We don't know how extensive these reshoots are really going to be. We don't know mm -hmm. what... It could just be like one set piece, really, that they're trying to work through... Um, 
and that would make it very hard to change, you know, just the tone of one part of the, 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 yeah. whole, the whole thing. It could be just a section of the film. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if Whedon had gotten in early and done a just a, another pass on the script or something, totally, that could have helped a lot. But uh, this is, as we've said, is probably going to be a minimal change to yeah. the, the final product. Yeah. I wonder how long the actual uh, shooting schedule is for that reshoot because, you know, a, a reshoot can mean five days, a reshoot could mean six weeks in the yeah. case of Rogue One yeah. where we're getting... 40% new footage for the features. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I actually don't think Joss Whedon is like a gun director or anything. Like, I don't think he's going to come in and do something amazing to this movie. For me, he's, like, I think he's, he's competent. very he's much amazing a writer. As a writer. Yeah. Yeah. He writes cool stories and he writes cool characters. Mm. And he's good at ensemble pieces. And great with quippy dialogue. Yeah. 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 But the, and, and then again, that's, that's you know, half of directing, I guess. Being able to Quips. is being able to write quippy dialogue. Just, yeah, well, I mean, or directing in that film. In that sense. <laughs> Fuck Scorsese's it. 101. <laughs> Get good at quips. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it? Okay. All right, quippy right, McQuip. What are we on to next? Number two, uh, we've got some Star Wars news. Yay. Um, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> yes. Uh, first of which is Han Solo's set photos. So we got Han Solo. Han Solo. Um, oh, on my boogie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got uh, we got to see some of the Super vehicles. Saiyan, Super Saiyan three Han Solo. Yeah, the that, oh, that the was, hair. That was the a, that's a lot of hair. <laughs> on no, I got guy. what you were saying. <laughs> uh, um, you know me with wigs. I do like a good wig, but um, that one uh, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, it, it's obviously going to play into the story. So uh, it's one of those things. Wait, sorry, where... play into the story as in like a plot point. Well, yeah, he'll get a haircut. And be like, oh, there's the origin story yeah. of his hair. <laughs> For sure, I will. Get, I will. <laughs> as if that's not gonna happen. Sorry. As if that's not gonna happen. What? Well, as if like George already... put money down again. Dude, we need a good point of conflict. Let's make his hair really crazy. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't ask me. I'm just commenting on the photos. I'm not the guy hiding it. Look, there, I think there, there probably has got to be a reason that his hair is so odd. <laughs> like, I, 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 yeah, I'm not sure about the hair, man. Will um, <laughs> it's really buffy and big. And I'm just glad it was he, like Donald Trump hair. Oh it's God. hipster Han Solo. I'm just glad he wasn't wearing like his exact outfit from the other movies because I feel like. I mean, he is at some point in this, in his knee. But, no, we'll uh, get a, a vest origin story. I'm really excited for <laughs> yeah. that. Like, like the hat origin story. Like the hat origin parts. story. Of, yeah. Oh, and God. the hair origin story in X Men. Oh, God. So oh. it's the, uh, three movies of origin story for the hair. <laughs> the Professor X. Unbelievable. But I think this, I think this film, uh, I don't know, these set photos made me equally excited and worried because I feel like it's going to fall into that origin story bullshit. Yeah, of course it is. I I loved all the all the vehicles. Like, there's a lot of Me lot too. of photos here. I really liked all the the vehicles, all the the designs for them. Really Very cool. retro. Yeah, real. Um, I don't know. I feel like they're going for some kind of uh, American graffiti or like rebel without a cause or yeah, something. With I this like guy. that. I like that. Yeah, I, I, maybe they are. Yeah. they could definitely be doing that. And uh, we, as we were talking about before we started the podcast, these guys who are directing it, Lord and Miller. Yeah, who did the Lego Movie, Twenty One Jump Street, Twenty Two Jump Street. These guys know how to do something that seems impossible and actually be able to achieve that. Yeah. Um, I didn't think anything would happen with Lego Movie and that was fantastic. I didn't think anything would happen with 21 Jump Street. Both of those were fantastic. So that is stacked in this film's favor. Mm. There's, there, there is a definite you know, style to those films though that I'm not sure will fit into the the Star Wars it's good universe, good. I would love that if I, I they mean, it's, if it's, they brought a different style to to this universe. I feel like these these film universes really have to diversify these things. Well, if if they're allowed to to they won't put be. their slant on it, then that's fine. Yeah, but this is my concern: is that the studio is not going to want that Twenty One Jump Street style film for a Han Solo origin film. They're going to want you know the Rogue One type feel. Oh, and I have I a feeling that if they try and kind of adapt to that okay, so style. Stuff, stuff I've heard about the Han Solo movie is that it's going to be more of a comedy and more of a heist western kind of vibe. So hopefully it'll be, be a little more in yeah. their um, wheelhouse, which yep. is comedies, that kind of thing. Yeah. Every time there's news about this movie, I'm like, I don't like this idea. I don't like much about it. I like um, I like the cast and I love these directors. So mm. they, I mean, apart from the general, you know, idea of this film, they've really done everything right. They've got the right guys for the project. Um, they've just, you know, the project itself seems to be something that might let this film down. And the hair, and the hair, and the hair. Yeah, fire the hair, lady. 
But oh, we also man. got some other Star Wars images, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, from Vanity it? Fair. So uh, Leibowitz ended up, um, very famous photographer, ended up taking all these photos. Beautiful um, photography. Yeah. Really I mean, nicely put together. It's a great, great um, selection of photos. Yeah, mm. and we get to see some new characters, which is really cool. So we get to see um, DJ, who's being um, played by Benicio Del Toro. Dark Jedi. Not not confirmed. I, be- confirmed. I believe it's confirmed by disc me. jockey. Um, I think that's what DJ stands for, George. Um, yeah, so he's, he, well, he, all right, so um, they've said that this is actually an unnamed character, but the crew calls him DJ. And okay. he looks hungover as fuck yeah. Yeah. in this photo. I like the look of the steampunky set that he's in. I like this whole, the whole shoot has a really cool color palette, which is a lot of car keys and browns and, and yellows. And I don't know, I just... Think the, the earthy tones. I'm really on board with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, much less of a sort of glossy aesthetic than JJ did in The Force Awakens. Yeah, um, seems it's, to be. A more, so you're saying this is a, a darker, more kind of Empire more, style film? Yeah, maybe. Like the <laughs> middle of the trilogy <laughs> kind of vibe. Yeah. The dark chapter in our yeah. hero's journey. Yeah. But I, I like the look of Del Toro. Um, I also really like the look of L- Laura Dern with her purple wig. It's very you and your wig. Bourgeois. Uh, yeah, it looks like a very wigs. fancy planet there on here. <laughs> I fucking love wigs. Eh? Love Why do I keep talking about wigs? I <laughs> do not know. <laughs> like, but it seems said, to be like, like maybe it should become a, discovering uh, something about himself. Uh, hairdresser or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, she's playing. So Laura Dern is from um, famously, obviously, from Jurassic Park. Hell yeah. Um, and she is playing a senator of some sort. Um, and she's got a really elegant gown. So I'm really excited to see what happens with <clears throat> her character. And they've revealed like a, a new set for this film, which will be the kind of Casino Planet. Um, I think I like Monte Carlo type. <laughs> Casino Planet. Casino Planet, yeah. Yeah, every planet's um, got to have a theme. So I think that, that we might we might find like some kind of fancy dress type, uh, you know, <laughs> scenes uh, isn't, isn't that, section. Isn't that all every Star Wars is just fancy, fancy dress? dress. <laughs> like you just go into the canteen yeah. and it's like, whoa. Why is everyone just so weird? <laughs> well, I mean, like you know, cocktail party fancy dress, which you don't you don't see many bow ties in Star Wars. It's not Death traditionally <laughs> in there. They're either dressed in like weird, crazy sci fi stuff or just like seventies clothes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Take your pick. <laughs> and then the other person, the other people we got to look at were um, the baddies, the bad guys. Ooh. So we got to see Captain Phasma without a helmet. Yeah, that's the yeah. first time we've seen her without the helmet. What? So we can reveal that Phasma looks exactly like, like uh, Gwendolyn Christie. Christie yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's amazing work. Yeah. I reckon they should have maybe faced, face replaced her. She should be with, a Yoda. <laughs> yeah. That would have been cool. <laughs> Yoda really defense. Tall Yoda. <laughs> Yoda defense. <laughs> not not Yoda, a Yoda. Oh, a Yoda. Oh, yeah. the, the race. She should be Yendel. <laughs> yeah. um, is it, it, oh, it Yaddle? Yaddle, Yaddle, that's it. Yaddle. <laughs> the, the one with the fucked up hair. <laughs> <laughs> what was that character? Seriously. Right. I, I had the um, I had the Fans of Menace. So I, I used to get all the Star Wars books when I was a kid. And I had the Fans of Menace one. And, the visual dictionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Yaddle's picture always used to freak me out. I was like... I'm suspect on that one. I'm so suspect. <laughs> Not today. Happy days. Some more Star Wars news. The the machine is starting to ramp up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not far until Last Jedi. So yeah, get ready for more of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready. Oh, yeah, um, I don't think you are. <laughs> all right. Um, speaking of ramping up, uh, number three, we have our final Spider-Man trailer. Now, there was two that were actually released this week. There was the... Um, uh, national version and there's the international version. Um, I absolutely love the international one. They're both really different, yeah. which is cool to see. Um, it's crazy. They released these two very different trailers together, the final trailer, and then the next day there was more footage being released. Yeah, a lot more, of clips come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but but not even just like a scene from the film, like with clips, they're more just like more trailers. Yeah, they're really kind interesting. of I get almost montage type clip type yeah. things. But uh, yeah, I love both of these trailers. This movie just keeps looking better and better. I love the um, the international one, the vlogging yeah. start a bit that yeah. he does, and then he does this really cool flip. Yeah, and the just the special effects, visual effects is so seamless. Uh, another thing I really liked in the international was hearing a little more from Vulture, mm. um, which is um, God, give a bit of ba- backstory to him, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, yeah, God, his name. man, uh, which Ke- highlights his backstory highlights, a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, um, well, and I, his agenda. It's very cool how tied into the Marvel universe this film looks. 
um, considering that it is like a Sony Marvel co-production, we thought maybe this would be a little kind of squared away, but then, you know, obviously Iron Man joins it. And then um, just, yeah, the Vulture's whole thing of stealing weapons from Avengers battles, they say in the- And from yeah, Avengers 1. The, yeah, yeah. Than the 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 Chitauri invasion. Yeah. There might be some strategy behind that because if you think about it, Marvel might be saying we're going to make this as tied into this universe yeah. as possible. Because Just try if, and take him yeah, back. <laughs> you want to take him back? Best of luck. Yeah. Everyone's going to rage. Oh, everyone's God, of on. Course. If if Sony pull Spider Man out in five years' time and Marvel is still <laughs> where it's at right now in terms mm-hmm. of the fan base, yeah. Good luck, Tom. Because uh, everyone's going to rage happen. quit. But you know they're trying it. They, yeah. Of course they'll try it. I love that before this movie even comes out, they're talking about taking him back. Yeah. It's like, they just can't help themselves, <laughs> no. man. They shoot themselves in the foot Relax. nonstop. It is. We talked about this last time. They're like, well, we could do this, right? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't so Four, hard. Fourth time that looked the easy. Charm, guys. <laughs> okay, one potential problem Uh-oh. with Spider-Man. Oh, dear. Go have ahead. we seen too much? Yeah, of course we have. I, we've seen a lot. We've seen yeah. a lot. I think that, I don't, I don't think we've seen the third act of this film. Because watching the trailers for Civil War, we saw a lot. And I feel like we thought we knew everything going into that movie. And and what actually became the end of that film and the plot of that film, we knew nothing about. Mm, I feel like yeah. Marvel's been pretty good at that. They, the, They're clever. They, I thought for Civil War, the climax was going to be the airport the air, scene. Airport, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but that ended up being the latter middle yeah. act. And the, the, the entire act. plot. Like, you know, super soldiers and we didn't know anything about that plot of that movie going in and, and Bucky, you know, was he killing? From from the you know, um uh the Mark and Matilda, did we really know who the bad guy was? Uh not really, no. no. I mean yeah, it was very well well hidden. But uh, I think it's gonna be the same with this thing. I think the the plane sequence obviously looks like the the, the big finale. I think that's probably gonna be a second act thing. And they'll have a different finale. I think something else will go on, yeah. Um, we also got some clips of uh, the new uh, Stark Spider-Man suit. Um, so good. He builds, builds for him. Yeah, so he's got his own little AI in there as well, yeah. like Jarvis yeah. style. Yeah. So I, I was under the impression too. that that was actually the old one. Like that, or, so that's the one that featured in Civil War. Uh, potentially, but... Uh, Do you, are you saying new as in like this is new. in this iteration yeah, of yeah, Spider-Man? Yeah, okay, yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, which looks cool. Yeah, very very cool. And we get to see like the HUD inside and everything. Yeah. Um, it's a much more kind of techy suit than we've seen in the movies, certainly. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, I was going to mention this earlier. At no point does my mind stray to the other Spider-Man films. They feel very, very, very separate to this. Yeah. Which I I'm very thankful for. That's, again, really cool the way they really integrated um, the Marvel Universe into this film to mm. really, yeah, make it its own thing in a way. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a reboot in any way. No. Which is, as I said, yeah, just if, yeah, it feels really it doesn't good. feel like a first movie even. It feels like a chapter in the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah. and Agreed. a very, and I mean, realistically, I think they're banking on the fact that we all know, you know, Spider Man's origin story by now. Mm. Um, we don't need that yeah. kind of story again. We don't need the beginning of Batman v Superman yeah. where we get the whole Bruce Wayne origin story again. No <laughs> thanks. Yeah, and I, you, that might happen. Let's face it; it could be in there a bit. Well, and this was this is another thing I well, was. Gonna, I've heard how it starts. Hmm. Um, and I kind of know the first little bit of the film, so. Oh, George has got an insider. Yeah, it's called Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wonder how how much uh, Uncle Ben will feature in this. If I hope that he doesn't get brought up at all. I think to be he's, honest. Give it, given, he's done. I would love to see. Who no, I, mean, they like, cast. I know he's dead, but I, I like. I hope there isn't oh, like a right. flashback scene or or like kind In of a mention to him. I'd love yeah, to see no. who they cast though, given how hot Aunt May is now. Like Channing Tatum as Uncle Ben. Or something. <laughs> 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 I agree with that. Be. That'd, be, that'd be pretty yeah. good. Just see like, like a photo in the corner on of, the street, like, just like fighting all yeah. these criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Someone shoots him. It's like <laughs> really heroic death. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I he's take it cop. all back. I do want to see a flashback <laughs> scene. That'd be wicked. That'd be great. Spider Man for a new generation. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Is, well, it's kind of moving on because it's uh, Tom Holland again. So number four is Tom Holland has been slated to play Nathan Drake um, in Sony Pictures and Sean Levy's Uncharted adaption. Now, this this movie they've been trying to get going for, what, five years now? Mm. At least uh, Mark Wahlberg was uh, almost in the role at one point. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, totally. Um, Nathan Fillion is who everyone wanted, but he's super old now. Um, so they've gone the opposite direction and cast someone very young. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping pens. <laughs> Jesus. God. Unprofessional, Connor. Um, Actually, I was throwing the pen at you. 
<laughs> Nathan, so Nathan Drake is at his youngest in his 30s, I guess, in the first game. Um, he's a very seasoned adventurer. Um, so this is very much going to be a origin story, I guess, of the character. Hey, hey origin story. This is a, this is a weird way to go. This feels very much a project being built around who they've decided to cast. Like they've jumped onto this up-and-coming actor who is fantastic uh, in everything we've seen him in. And um, yeah, I guess they're just trying to build it around that. I've heard it's there was a segment in the fourth game where you get to play as young Nathan Drake. I've heard that's going to be going to be the jumping off point for this version. Very strange. I don't know. I think it's a good idea from um, adapting a video game to take this kind of ploy where you're not exactly sort of copy pasting the mm. same character and you're you're maybe integrating the story in a way where it's all linear. So this is mm. probably going to be canon for the game. You yeah. know, this is yeah. Instead of him being thirty years old, hey, let's make him younger. Let's let's draw this story out a little bit. I think it makes sense. I I, I get the decision yeah. made. I mean, realistically, when you have an adaptation from a, a game to a film, they they never take the story from the actual game. It's always you know after, before, kind of in a separate area of the universe. Sometimes it's not even the same character. Um, now, I would actually be interested to just see a film that takes the story from a game and and places it in film, or even the character in general, which they're doing this one at least. Um, so I, I I don't know this this film doesn't really spark much interest for me as a as a prequel or as an origin story. It's uh, I just would be surprised attempt. if it doesn't happen because this movie's just been in development hell for so long, mm. and it just doesn't need to be made. Like of all video game adaptations, the the Uncharted series is the most cinematic which means making a movie is the most redundant. Um, it's just Indiana Jones as a game. Mm. We already have all these Indiana Jones movies, <laughs> so it just doesn't really need to happen. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm fearful that Tom Holland is going to turn into Shia LaBeouf too because <laughs> he is just signing on to all these massive franchises. Shia was very promising when he started as he well. Was, he had he a lot was. of great performances and some pretty good movies. He, he, you, he latched onto him. as a. I thought that especially he really... Pulled that first Transformers through the dirt. I loved him in Constantine. Constantine. Oh, he's wow, in Constantine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, a little kid right. in it. He played Mutt. That's right. Him. And then has that yeah, little uh, after credit scene as yeah. an angel. As an angel. <laughs> Disturbia, man. He should have left that at the end of his career, really. Yeah. <laughs> Fly yeah. off as an angel. Uh, yeah, so hopefully Tom Holland doesn't go down that path where he gets oversaturated and falls into a dark pit of despair and <laughs> becomes Shia LaBeouf. Becomes well, I mean, insane, you can kind yeah. of go two directions from that point. You can either kind of go the Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio route, which is you just continue doing, you know, you, you take your pick of the litter, essentially, and continue to do good films. Um, or you go, as you said, the kind of the Shia LaBeouf, which, I mean, is not the worst thing in the world. I think he still makes good films, just not really recognizable films. And he's uh, insane crazy and person. keeps getting arrested, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, Tom Holland, I think, seems to be doing much better than that. He's He's got a really good social media presence. He seems very in control of that stuff. Did you guys see him on Lip Sync Battle? Oh, yeah. That was yeah, yeah. amazing. That, that, was that so is a man good. in control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in control of everything. Um, anyway, yeah. screw Uncharted movie, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, All right. Speaking number, of who cares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next story. <laughs> <laughs> number five, big news. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger has joined the next Terminator project. Genesis 2. Yeah. Genesis. Prepare for the app to destroy the world. Yeah, so James Cameron is executive producing this one, so he's on board. So that's Means something. Nothing to me. Fuck. And Tim Miller. <laughs> something. Tim Miller, <laughs> information. Um, the director of Deadpool, is yeah. supposedly so going to be directing this that's one. that's what... Strikes my interest. I uh, no, I don't give a shit. Yeah, because I mean, when <laughs> when I say strikes my interest, as in like, would be the possibly the only reason that I could see this coming it through as like a, a passable movie. I just can't see what they can do with this world anymore. Especially bringing back Arnie. Like, I feel like that just, limits the possibilities. Just let it so die. much. It, the the um, the efforts that they made with Salvation was they should have maybe continued that part. They should have stuck with it. Yeah, that was a better attempt than Genesis. I think because. At the end of the day, the for me, Terminator 1 and 2 succeed because the story revolves around, um, it's a simple story and you don't see the future. You know, that's yep. part of the story. It's like you the get promise. glimpses, but not. Yeah, but it's about the promise of the yeah. future. And, and that's, I know I just said Salvation was the way they should have gone, but that's what I liked about the first two. Um, it's kind of a small contained story and you don't really have to do much with the world building, yeah. but... 
they've gone and they now we're up to what five or six now and I feel like they've really maxed this thing out. Yeah, this is an example of a, a series that really should have just finished it too. Or three, yeah. I mean, three was unnecessary, but at least it kind of was kind of a bookend. In, in a yeah. story sense, though, it should have finished at one because we're dealing with a story about time travel and time loops and paradoxes. It's just like the story was complete at one and then two, they were starting to get a little, you know, getting in there and messing with the, oh, we pushed it back. The, the judgment day is still coming, but it's not going to say it's later. And then, you know, once it get to three and beyond that, it just gets insane. And it's yeah. just, no one could make a coherent story out of this universe now. Um, I, yeah, they really got to leave these movies alone for a while. They've got to leave it for two decades or something. <laughs> yeah. They just got to stop every... it. They just got to like, let it die. There's been one every sort of five to 10 years for the past 30 years. And there, there hasn't been a good one since 80, whatever. You, you don't like Judgment Day? Uh, no, yeah, I do. Uh, 91. 91, cool, yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the only one I like in the series. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I'm, I have no real love for the first one. I like the first one just because of the virtue of it being just more of a smaller horror sci-fi. Yeah, it's cool. There's some cool stuff in there, but the most recent time I saw it was um, a double in the cinema with Robocop, and Robocop is a fucking masterpiece, yeah. and that movie holds up in every way imaginable. Yeah. Uh, and, and the first time in there, I'm like, wow, this is aged. <laughs> it is, but it is also a very different film in the way that, you know, it... Yeah, much more satirical. It was far more satirical and it was far more kind of just goofy even in its day. I love Robocop, man. I, I, such re- a good I film. only watched it about a year ago. Um, for the first time? For the first time. time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, I just lapped it up. Yeah. yeah, that that, loved that guy that was melting gave me nightmares for ages. Yeah. That's like, that one of my so... favorite bits in that film. <laughs> and yeah. it's such a good effect. Like, yeah. just, yeah. Love it. The practical awesome effects film. in that movie and the. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. even on that basic level, just the effects hold yeah. up so much better in Robocop than in uh, yes. Terminator. Like that that Arnie puppet <laughs> when yeah, he's yeah, taking yeah, his yeah, eye out yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> rough. <laughs> that is bad. Yeah. It, it looks so glossy. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I give those kind of older films. A I kind of love those. No, but I mean, bits, no, come on, yeah. they did it so much better in Alien, like yeah. almost a decade earlier. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm not going to go too easy on them because of that. You look at Star Wars and the effects they were doing in the yeah. '70s. Come on. Yeah. Um. All right, moving on from that travesty, yeah. uh, we have new dark universe details. Universal's so dark, uni- dark universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the Universal monster movie shared universe that they're really trying to get going. Suppose that it was meant to start with uh, Dracula Untold, which they've decided they, now is, is not, not part, part of it, I guess. For, I don't know why. Like, How is that the cutoff for a good film? Like, I would rather watch that film than fucking watch Godzilla again or... Yeah, uh, but, I mean, no, he, Godzilla, but, or, Luke Evans is cool and he's kind of in King right Kong. now. And yeah. He was a cool Dracula. Um, but now The Mummy is really going to kick it off now with Tom Cruise. And, yeah, uh, it'll Russell be the first Crow. one I feel that actually has a plot. Because Godzilla was very much... Godzilla? Yeah, Godzilla. Godzilla. The Godzilla's not in this. Godzilla's legendary pictures. Yeah, what are you talking about, man? What? Oh, jeez, here we go again. Godzilla's go again, DC. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, wait, 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 the wait. Mummy is Marvel. Oh, shit. I'm, all right, I'm thinking completely different. You are very much thinking Jesus of a very different fuck. thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take over this story because yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah, a bit yeah. lost You do here. you. I've, I've completely <laughs> fucked you it. You do you. How did I think that that was part of... <laughs> Tom fucking Cruise taking on John like a massive yeah. Godzilla. I don't know what I was like. I was <laughs> just going to be on this like, I get so confused with all these fucking shared universes now. I just blend it all together. I think you've actually hit on some gold here though, Connor. <laughs> yeah. Once both of these universes are up and running, <laughs> yeah. the, the giant monster movies <laughs> yeah. and the little monster yeah. movies, we should get them to cross over and battle. Yeah. Have the giants, oh, giant monsters against like the Universal yeah. Avengers. Yeah. I'm just Fuck trying to yes. think of what I've just said. Like I'm just imagining those two movies next to each other. It just it makes no sense. I would love to see Fucking Tom Cruise, up. five foot ten, battling a <laughs> skyscraper size Godzilla. Oh yeah, and he's a, he's a mummy. He's all wrapped <laughs> oh, up in the bandages yeah. and stuff. Uh, anyway, we we mo- is raging on himself. <laughs> we mentioned this is definitely. I don't know how I keep sorry. doing this. I don't, like it's it's <laughs> next level. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway, we 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 <laughs> talked about um what the mummy's doing last week with the new trailer, trying to set up yeah. this universe with the whole um you know the Jekyll and organization, Hyde Jekyll and Hyde, and that they thing, investigate yeah. paranormal stuff or whatever. Um, so they've dropped a whole bunch of new new information. Bill Condon, Condon <laughs> is to direct <laughs> Bride of Frankenstein, so I guess that's going to be the next one after Mummy. Ha- Javier Bardem is is set to play Frankenstein's monster. Yes, yeah. so that's that's cool. That's cool. I casting. love Javier Bardem. He was one of the best parts of Pirates. And Johnny Depp is going Same to be playing the nothing. Invisible Man. So at least we won't have to look at Johnny Depp, I guess. Oh, Johnny Depp! 
like, oh, why, why get that guy in? Why? He's very um, out right now, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, he's so out and yeah people haven't caught on to that it seems I feel well, like studios haven't caught on to that people trend, have. Transcendence I feel like was the end for him they oh, really man. that God, fucking that was movie terrible. Man. Yeah, that they, was terrible that reminded me of that one okay wait wait I'm so, trying to remember the last good Johnny Depp film <sighs> Rango was great yeah good point loved Rango mm. I can tell you one that wasn't The Tourist <laughs> oh, you that one? fuck that <laughs> yeah, movie, that you, man! Angelina Jolie and him speeding around. I remember, wa- I remember walking out at the end of that movie and being like, "What the hell did I just watch?" And then it got nominated for Best Picture uh, at the Globes. Yeah, oh it was a huge controversy God. because um, the whichever company released it like really wined and dined the yeah, um, yeah. The, the sure. Globe Committee. Sure, um, yeah, uh, insane. I think Ricky Gervais went in on them for that. That was some <laughs> oh, he goes great in on everyone. Yeah, um, no, that was. Yeah. That was such a nothing film for me, though. I, was like, I remember watching it. me like, I I'm, will forget I'm this. I'm actually, um, I call me fucking insane, but I'm actually kind of interested to see what they're doing with this universal um, dark universe. I will, I will say once Mummy comes out, because I, I have a good feeling about that film for whatever reason. I've, I've I don't heard, know why. I've, I've known someone who's seen it. I've heard decent things. If it's just, I've heard it's lean and, and quick and okay, perfect. <laughs> it's all right. If it's, if it's just kind of like a Mission Impossible movie with some supernatural. Almost. Bring it on. And it's like kind of like a six, seven out of ten. Yeah. Mm. That is a win in my books for we, these guys. We talked it about could this. be cool if we set up this 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 film series that is like X Files meets kind of Hellboys, you know. BPRD. Yeah, yeah, yeah BPRD. And that's exactly what I was about to say. We we've already said that it's it very much like that organization. Mm. And and they released a trailer for the Dark Universe that, that just showed a lot of footage from the old, you know, thirties and forties yeah. movies. And it is such a great legacy. It would be really cool if they could capitalize on it. If they do this well, there's this this has potential for being the other shared universe yeah. that can actually work yeah. other than Marvel. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one. I'd love to see DC. it work. Man, good luck to them. Mm. Um, all right, moving on from that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ner- I'm nervous about continuing now. <laughs> I, can take I feel like my brain did. is absolutely fried. <laughs> all right, number seven, uh, James Wan to produce uh, Resident Evil Reboot. Get started, man. Get that shit pumping because <sighs> Resident Evil 7 just came out. Let's get a new one happening. Do we <laughs> yeah. need a new one? Get Do on we it. need a new one? I'm, I'm, I, look, my first reaction was absolutely like, oh, another. Re-. But then I thought about it. And I'm like, a Resident Evil reboot that isn't you know part of this Paul W.S. Anderson set version could be really cool if they actually just make a, a Resident Evil movie. A horror, of, a horror movie. Yeah, yeah, like a kind of zombie plague sort of thing. You could do something really interesting with it. And James Wan is, you know, he kind of goes from strength to strength, really. James Wan has pumped out some of the best horror movies in the past decade. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you are correct with the direction they go with this more of a horror yeah, well, imagine rather than a crazy action we've seen, we've CG seen, fest. We've seen the crazy shit from, from the Resident Evil series. Maybe it could take a cue from the game, scale it back, do something like Resident Evil 4. That's exactly what I was thinking. Just, I'd love to see that just in movie just, form. you know, Leon in this fucked up, terrifying village. Have, hmm. you, guys, have you guys played through that game? Yeah. No, man. <laughs> that game is one of the best games I've ever played. Yeah. It's so good. I remember playing through it on the GameCube and I've never really got into horror games and that one I was just like, this do you know what is I- <laughs> so... At the atmosphere. Yeah. Like the feeling of being alone in this town. Yeah. Like just bag, creepy bag characters and just <laughs> they like should definitely go down that route. That would yeah. be a sick, sick movie. Do you know what I played that on? I played that on the Wii. Yeah. <laughs> like the first Wii. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. You're like, oh, it's like, yeah, I still got my Wii, man. I played this morning. <laughs> You're like, I played it on a Switch. You remember the Switch? <laughs> it was a crazy. Do you still have a Wii? <laughs> like, yeah, um, somewhere. Less. <laughs> somewhere in my um in um, my Nintendo Emporium. Did you um? Did you guys see Silent Hill? Yeah, yeah. Because that's generally that, that that gave me that fucked me up that movie. That's one of the better video game adaptations. It's not a high bar, but it's if they could do something kind of scaled back and creepy. Yeah, that was that was a decent cool. creepy film with cool you know monsters in it. Mm. And if that if way this, too nihilistic, I, it's, that, it's grim. Yeah. It is yeah. grim, man. Yeah. <laughs> that the the roasting the cop over the fire Oofed. that gave me fucking nightmares. Oofed. That's rough. I actually dig the Resident Evil series, the the Jovovich, um movies. It is it like the first. Two it's a wild ride, right? man. Like oh, they're they're like very between kind of competent and and just like insanely bad. But when you kind of watch them all back to back, it's really interesting just what they do with the series. It's terrible. It's junk, but it's 
yeah, junk is fun. I reckon I've seen probably half of them. Mm. And yeah. I can't fun. remember where I stopped watching. Like there's, I haven't I, seen I, the last two. I, I know that I watched at least the first two, if not three. Mm. And I think I remember, I can't remember which one it was that they were in a, like a plane up in fucking the Arctic or some shit. Mm-hmm. And it was so bad that I, I stopped watching it like halfway through. I was like, this is, I can't do it. And I don't think I ever went back and watched another one. Yeah. So no, well, it's done now. So that's interesting that the final chapter is actually the final chapter. Can you believe it? Yeah. Until this doesn't get made and then, <laughs> and then they continue yeah. making. Jovovich shows up in the credits of this new one. Oh, You're part of a bigger world you don't even realize. <laughs> so, so this one is six movies that have been planned. Oh. No, but let's not worry oh, about that. Oh, God. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? Six series. <laughs> That's the magic number. Everyone wants to make six, six movies. <gasps> Who's made a successful series of six films? <laughs> like, like, Where are they I, reckon, I reckon literally like 18 months ago, people would say, this is part of a planned trilogy. trilogy. And now, they all failed. Yeah. So why is everyone hit, shooting for six now? Six Maybe that we'll aim for six and we'll get three out then. Because <laughs> I think we, we'll do like a scale down version of Marvel. Six seems realistic, doesn't God. it? No, Power it doesn't. Ages, Call of Duty, this. Film studios, make one movie. Make it good. <laughs> make then we'll talk about a sequel. Or, or even, like, a, I don't even mind trilogies. Yeah. Like, fuck. Just. Tril- like trilogy now, it's like, wow, there's only going to be a trilogy? <laughs> <laughs> like, holy shit. These what a guys- nice contained <laughs> little story. <laughs> 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 Do you remember watching Lord of the Rings? That really contained, scale. just like kind of, I really loved that. <laughs> they brought it down to like nine hours. It was really oh, impressive. Man. God, if Lord of the Rings was made nowadays, Jesus. That would, that be, would be the Tolkien verse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, it would the be. The I mean, but if there was ever Tolkien-verse. a film or if there was ever a story that could kind of fit a Tolkien verse or a, a shared universe, it was All probably right. his universe. <laughs> All right, go join please, it. Go please, join uh, a film studio. Whoever's leaning, please don't do that. Please <laughs> oh, do not man. do that. You know they're working on it right now. Oh, God. I'm just like thinking like this nine movie Lord of the Rings. Tolkien, we already got Tolkien. six. Hobbit was Tolkien. long enough for nine movies. It felt that way anyway. Hobbit was. No, so it'd be nine for just Lord of the Rings. And then Hobbit <laughs> would be like 18. Because we really need to get into. The every... Samarillion and, and. No, no, no. no just just, the, just Hobbit. the Hobbit. Just the Hobbit. The one book. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. there's 27 movies. <laughs> four books but it would have if it's just, that's that's just a franchise if it was a shared universe you'd have to be like going off yeah, in different yeah, yeah. S- uh, sprouts yeah sprouts can't wait for the get, like, sprout. El- can't wait for the tom bombadil film yeah oh god <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the true story and we'll get some origin stories it'd be like a morgoth story and uh well that's that's depressing all right moving on to number I want eight a gandalf gandalf origin story, story. and Dr- Atari jude lord to play story. him <laughs> And like see Gandalf like being born, and then you see no Johnny Johnny Depp him. Johnny Depp to play him. <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> you! No, I'm fucking leaving this podcast. <laughs> All, All right, right number eight, <clears throat> the finale. Director, the yeah finale, the big finish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. All right, director Josh Boone says Fox News, Fox News, Fox fuck. Fox fuck. 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 Director Josh Boone says Fox fuck. 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 Well, what do you think, guys? Well, he's, he's going a bit crazy, isn't he? What's he talking about? He's pretty angry. <laughs> Fox News. Fuck. <laughs> Director Josh Boone says Fox's new mutants will be a horror film. Ta-da. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, well, so the direct quote is, we are making a full-fledged horror movie set within the X-Men universe. There are no costumes. There are no supervillains. We are trying something very, very different. Nice. Yeah, well, I mean, what yeah. they were doing before wasn't working, so. Yeah, well. <laughs> That's really 50%. your only option. We can continue making shitty films or well, they we can do Logan. something different. That's kind of cool. We got some casting that was news. That's we got thing. some uh, casting news about this movie, uh, Maisie Williams and Anya Taylor-Joy. Yes. Um, but otherwise, we didn't really know anything about it. So this is the first kind of direction we've been given as to where this is going. And we talked about this last week, well, whenever that news dropped in the past couple of weeks, you know, how is this going to differentiate itself from the main X-Men? Because that seems to be setting itself up as... As uh, young mutants. Yeah. <laughs> they are mutants and they're young. And it's just the yeah. same sort of team thing. But This is uh, kind of answering the question. Yeah. Uh, which is, um, I don't know if this is the solution to the Fox's X-Men problem. Um, you know, the no costumes thing is a bit probably the opposite direction that people have been wanting the series to go, although we did see them in costume in Apocalypse and that was weird. Um, I feel like the series was at its strongest at the very beginning um, in a certain sense when it was, they really 
before the costumes kind of came into it, when it was just people. Before the uh, leather. Before the leather, yeah. Um, I feel like you could, you know, there's really cool stories to tell with these mutant characters just in this world that hates them. Um, mm. It doesn't need to be superhero stuff. Well, I mean, the the kind of general story of, of the first two X-Men film was really interesting. Just kind of the politics of them trying to be accepted. Well, the and, villain is is hatred and bigotry. Yeah. Which is really cool. And that's what these X-Men movies should be about. As soon as they introduced a supervillain in Apocalypse, it was horrendously bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or even, or even going to, because, you know, every um, X-Men film has to go down that dark Phoenix road. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, it just, it doesn't work. I think there's even, I think X-Men, the first two in particular, really um, made those themes very poignant, you know, that, mm. you know, how we interact as humans and segregation amongst, you know, different ethnicities and, mm. And um, yeah. sexes, and w- multiple things. Yeah, even Days uh, of Future Past w- was able to kind of hit on those themes in yeah, a clever yeah, yeah. way. Yeah, the strongest but bits I, of the series were always sorry, George. I'll let you finish. Yeah. But the strongest bits were always you know Wolverine um, in a in a cage fighting, or, uh, or or Bobby coming out to his parents as a mutant just in a house. Yeah, always the strongest stuff. I think. And I think they can even go down that road further. I think there's even more room to explore those themes mm. and yeah. to really make them more poignant. Yeah. Yeah. And either that or do like a Logan style where you really contain a story um, and just make it kind of a character piece. Uh, so generally I'd look at this quote and I would say, this is just a, a young director a talking shit. Like, you know, they, they get into a, this big studio situation. They're like, yeah, I'm going to do a Josh Trank and I'm going to make this fan, <laughs> this uh, fantastic four movie, something really interesting. It's going to be a body horror film or something. And then it comes out and it's just another studio horrible film. studio yeah. film. But um, given what Fox has been doing lately, maybe um, maybe they will actually do something different here. It's our hope. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's MA. Less or more violent? What do you want? I want more violent. Okay. I don't think I it don't... needs to be about violence even. Yeah. Just the, the themes and you... Can't really make a uh, you can't really make a full on full fledged horror movie if it's just going to be PG thirteen probably. Um, I'm really excited for Godzilla to turn up in this um, <laughs> X Men shared universe. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. And that's the top eight. Uh, cool. That was a lot of big headlines and uh, plenty of exciting stuff coming up in the world of movies. But we got some honorable mentions. First of all, uh, some sad news again. Uh, Roger Moore, the first 007 be put on film, uh, has died. Wow. The first double is ever to be put on wow. film. <laughs> wow. In, 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 this nine, is in so 1952's research. Godzilla. Um, so he's he's the, the second um, what? James Bond, no, he's obviously. The third, because there's George Lazenby as well. Was he before? Oh, yeah. he's after Connery, yeah. Sorry. Um, he's the first 007. Go, go on, boys, he's go the first on. 007 who's, to, who's to pass Roger away. Moore? Sean, Sean Connery. Connery. Oh fuck, <laughs> Derek! I get, I get <laughs> so confused about the Man. which one comes first. Anyway, yeah. Um, well, I think he was about ninety-two years old. So good on him. Uh, he had a he had a good run. Eighty-nine. Here. He was uh, close enough. <laughs> he was. Uh, he seemed. He seemed like a cool guy, actually. Yeah. Roger Moore. He was. He never took himself too seriously. But um, sad to see him go. Uh, we've lost a Bond. I grew up on his films. Mm. I. Uh, he was always my favorite. For Bond. He was. He was my first Bond too. Um, I loved uh, Moonraker, the, the sort of sci-fi one. Mm. Um, he always had a b- little more, I don't know, he's a bit more cheeky than... Uh, yeah. Ch- Sean Connery had a pizzazz and, and, and a sexiness to him. More of a wink to the camera yeah. from, uh, from Audrey Moore. Um, and as you said, yeah, I think he was uh, just a fun fun kind of guy and mm. lived his life to the fullest. Mm. So uh, sad to see him go. His, um, his memoirs about making some of the bond movies uh in the in the 70s they're they're very interesting he comes across as very kind of self-effacing and, and fun he's not afraid to tell it like it was what do you reckon connor <laughs> <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself man it's all good my brain we is so you. fried right you. now we still love you <laughs> um but yeah as benny said we at least we still got double sm and godzilla from 1912. <laughs> <laughs> Next on our list for honorable mentions is uh, Justice League Dark loses second director. Doug is, is this even like a movie? So, is there even a I, I didn't even realize this was happening. We, we, we got to start. Script? We got to. We got to make a special DC episode. Actually, we got to catalog every director that's fallen off one of these DC films because uh, Guillermo del Toro was originally going to do this, and now Doug Liman. Uh, has also stepped away from the film. 
Doug Lyman, he's he did um, Edge of Tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was going to do Gambit. I think he oh, stepped God. away from that as well. Gambit. Gambit. Um, so, yeah, this director's universe is um, really That's building up a massive <laughs> list of directors. That aren't directing involved. anything yeah. <laughs> in some capacity. I was, I was about to mention that this is a very strange move for a, a director's universe. Deja vu, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, this is, tragedy aside, this is two stories this week are a DC movie loses a director. Um, yeah. Which is not that unusual, unfortunately. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a bit sad. I would have loved to have seen Del Toro's version because I think Justice League Dark needs Such to be a dark, cool concept. Quirky, quirky kind of. It needs... Yeah. It needs uh, um, an X factor to it. Yeah. I'm surprised they're even trying to go ahead with it. It's very odd. Yeah. Some having, of the decisions they made for the films they're commissioning is very bizarre mm-hmm. to me. Having said that, we would pretty much like to see Del Toro's version of anything. Yeah. yeah. There's not much that you could like insert into that sentence that we wouldn't be like, ah, oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Del Toro Spider Man. Probably love to see that. I would. Yeah, man. Yeah. He'd, I would he'd, suffer he'd, another he'd do Morbius the Living Vampire. That would be <laughs> fucking sick. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. That'd be excellent. Um, second last honorable mention. The Game of Thrones season seven trailer, or the first full trailer, has dropped. I don't know. It, it looks like another Game of Thrones series. <laughs> yeah. It it the scale is pretty massive, though. I mean, this looks like a movie trailer almost. I how think. many how many episodes are meant to be in this? Like eight, seven? It's uh, it's definitely lo- less than than previous seasons. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm so I'm so curious to see how they will fit so much into what will presumably be such little time. So we're hoping for longer episodes. I think. Yeah, maybe even then. Like even then, it's going to be a lot to fit in. Um, we don't really know what, what the story's going to be exactly. Well, we yeah. know what we what essentially needs to kind of wrap up is that we need to have Daenerys come over to the Seven Kingdoms. We know that we need to to have some kind of uh, you know Jon Snow becoming the king type story. But Game of Thrones is Game of Thrones. You know, like some of these stories are going to be wrapping up. Via the Earlier death of their... than expected, yeah. <laughs> like someone's, you know, someone's just going to get their throat slit. And say, How well, will John Snow uh, ascend to the king? Oh, he won't. He's oh, going to die. He's dead. He's dead. It's fine. Yeah. No, it's entirely possible. Yeah. Cool trailer. Looks great. George. Game Big... of Thrones. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're up to episode three, season one, are you? Or... No, fuck you. <laughs> I'm up to episode three, season two. <laughs> yeah. Um. How far have you actually gotten in the series? Legitimately. Legitimately, I got. Through season one. Let's just put it this way. His favorite character is Eddard Stark. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, I love Sean Bean. I can't wait to Boris see what he does is. in this series. Stel- stellar stuff, buddy. All right. Uh, our, final <laughs> our final honorable mention, uh, Netflix's Castlevania trailer was dropped. This means literally nothing to me. Yeah, it looks awesome. Um, I can't believe they went for an anime style. I, I, for some reason, I had in my head they were doing a, a live, live action. action. Yeah. Um, n- no, I'm really glad that this is the way it's going. It looks like um, Vampire too. Hunter D or something. Yeah. Um, the, the animation studio, Frederator, is... I, I had to look it up because this looks like um, a legit uh, uh, anime studio, but it's Frederator who do uh, Adventure Time and a bunch of Cartoon Network shows. Oh, wow. So yeah. it's an American studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a bird Interesting. Interesting. Um, but they, they fucking knocked the look out of the park. Yeah. I've always loved the aesthetic of um, Castlevania. I, I played yeah. a few back on the PlayStation in the day, and it, it's such a cool... Cool. Like I said, Vampire Hunter D, it really reminds me of like Bloodlust. That, what yeah. a sick movie that was. I never played it, but I was always so intrigued by Car- Castlevania mm. from the aesthetic of the game, that mm. horror. And amazing fantasy. music. I really hope they're able to bring some of that into yeah. it. Um, so it's being executive produced by Adi Shankar, who um, has done a few, he's been kind of making a cool name for himself. He produced uh, Dread, which everyone loved, of course. And he's behind a bunch of really cool short films on YouTube, um, such as that Power Rangers one that you, that you really like, George. Oh, yeah. And uh, also that uh, Truth in Journalism, the the Venom short film, and a Punisher one that Tom Jane reprised the role for. Cool. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. I'm really excited for this. I think it looks awesome. Yeah. And Netflix can really do no wrong at this point. Yeah. Especially with these little animated uh, projects. That Voltron series is fantastic. I, if, if, uh, if you're into animation, definitely check that out. That was really well done. Mm. I think that's it, guys. That's it. That's our top eight. Woo! Happy and honorable mentions. Well done, guys. Thank you, George. Your your validation means everything to me. I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear that. Guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and a comment below. What are you excited for in these stories? We'll be back next week for another episode of Top 8. Who will be here with me? Uh, because 
Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you guess who will be here? <laughs> write the comment. Write up. the comments who you think will be oh. here next week. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> bye bye. See you guys. Bye.